I think 2024 might truly be the year of the Linux desktop. Yesterday, we had the whole snap situation with a bunch of fake crypto wallets being uploaded, and it seems like, seems, that Canonical is doing at least a little bit to address it. We'll see if they do everything they need to do in the long term. And now we have another situation, this one affecting the KDE project. What I will say off the bat is even though a lot of the people in the KDE project are volunteers and the project is considerably smaller, they are handling this a thousand times better than Canonical. This all started with a simple Plasma 6 global theme called Grey Layout. Now, personally, I never would have installed a theme that had a 5 out of 10 rating, but this user wanted to take a look. And when they did, well, do not install global themes. Some wipe out all your data. Hacked. Installed a global theme, it erased all my drives. Installing this theme had the potential to delete all the data writable by your user. This includes things like your home directory. Now you're probably thinking a very obvious question. This is a theme. How in the world does a theme modify my system? It's just a theme. Well, going forward, KDE needs to be incredibly clear about what a global theme is and what a global theme isn't. So when we look at something like a plasma theme, this is a separate thing from a global theme. A plasma theme is just a bunch of image files and config files. Assuming there's no issue with parsing these files, these are completely safe. When we are looking at a global theme though, that is not the case. Okay, so here is an example of the source files of a very popular global theme called Sweet. Now, different global themes are going to have a different number of these directories. In these directories, you'll find a number of things. You'll find things like image files, you'll find text files, but you will also find QML files. This is a high-level language used to write Qt interfaces. But more importantly, are files like this. This is a JavaScript file. Other global themes might also make use of shell scripts. Inside of these files, you can run arbitrary code. Much like any other application on your system, these files can contain any valid code inside of them. Every global theme is not really a theme. What it really is, is an add-on. And inside of an add-on, you can run arbitrary code. These global themes should be treated like installing something from the AUR or a random GitHub repo where you are going to treat it with caution. Or if you want to put it in KDE terms, global themes should be treated the exact same way as things like KWIN scripts, widgets, effects. You should treat a global theme with extreme care. Again, it can run any arbitrary code. So with that being said, if you are not a developer and you don't know how to examine this code, I would highly recommend not installing any niche global themes. Only install things that you know other people have used and you know are safe. Now, unlike the snap situation where it was very clear that that was malicious, in this case, it doesn't seem to be. In this case, it seems more likely it was just incompetence. So this user downloaded all the files before they got deleted and actually took a look at them. The two main lines we care about are in full representation.qml on line 144 and save.sh on line 6. I had a look at the code and it stems from plasma conf saver and seems benign. This is a plasma 5 widget that allows you to save your current desktop layout configuration and restore previous saved layouts on the fly. Keep in mind, this was a Plasma 6 global theme. This is a Plasma 5 widget. That is going to be very important. The cmd.index of pattern does not actually execute the pattern, in this case, save.sh or rm-rf, but checks what command has been run to act accordingly. It's a poor man's state machine, e.g. this right here, is used to check whether save.sh or rm.rf will run in the last command. The save.sh script is only ever called with these arguments here. The critical part is the config folder. This line right here is never empty 
or set to root. Even if the config path was by accident or malice set to an empty string, the resulting config folder would be unequal to root. And for the other location of rm-rf, the save path, there's also a save property. That all said, this is a plasmoid that was written for KDE 5. Maybe some interaction with KDE 6 led to this issue. One issue that could have happened is that this line right here now uses standards path .stands location due to KDE 6. This could lead to config path looking something like some path and then a space and then slash, which expands to sh, save.sh, some path, space, slash, and then the rest of it, which will happily remove everything. The whole situation reminds me of the Steam uninstaller where a single space had some remarkable results. For anyone unaware of that situation, this happened back in 2015. Moved .local slash share slash Steam, ran Steam, it deleted everything on the system owned by the user. This was caused by two very simple lines. Firstly, setting the Steam root variable to whatever this evaluates to, and then rm-rf the variable slash star. Now what would happen if this right here became an empty string? Well, what you end up running is rm-rf slash star, which this comment is right. That is scary, but that comment shouldn't be there. That should be making sure that this is never empty. Now I was already planning to give a much lighter hand than what I gave Canonical. However, the KDE developers have shown that they are actually willing to step up and take responsibility for what happened. So when he found out, Nate Graham said this. Geez, how awful. This particular theme has been removed, too dangerous to live. We're discussing a path forward for making sure this kind of thing can't happen. Alongside this, David Edmondson also made a blog post, trusting content on the KDE store. A global theme on the KDE third-party store had an issue where it executed a script that removed users' data. It wasn't intended as malicious, but a mistake in some shell parsing. It was promptly identified and removed, but not before doing some damage to that user. To developers, it's not a surprise that a third-party plugin can do this sort of thing. It's as intended. A global theme can ship custom lock screens, custom applets, custom settings, and all of these can run arbitrary bundled code. You can't constrain this without limiting functionality. To that end, there's an explicit warning when downloading plugins. That warning saying, the content available here has been uploaded by users like you and has not been reviewed by your distributor for functionality or stability. I think this warning is a good start, but it probably should mention something about safety instead. Functionality and stability, yeah, that's fine, but making sure the user is aware that this may not be safe, I think is a lot more important. Our primary issue boils down to expectation management and communication. There are plenty of other ways where users can download and run unfettered code from the internet. The Arch user repository, adding a bunch of PPAs, downloading from random GitHub repos, so on and so forth. This isn't a bad thing. It's useful and people do amazing things with this to benefit users. In those cases though, there's an expectation that because it's a program that it's inherently unsafe and a user needs to trust the source. Our issue is phrases like global theme or plasma applet don't always carry this message, especially global theme. This point here, absolutely hits the nail on the head. Users will look at things like the AUR, PPAs and things like that and know that they shouldn't be trusted. Now, some users will just blindly trust them anyway, but anyone who's using Linux and has been using it for a long time should be aware that they shouldn't be trusting them. But when you install something like a global theme, you think theme, you think CSS, you think that can't be harmful. But that's not the case. So what can we do better? In the short term, we need to communicate clearly what security expectations Plasma users should have for extensions they download into their desktops. Applets, scripts, and services 
being programs can easily be recognized as potential risks. It's harder to recognize that Plasma themes, wallpaper plugins, and Kwin scripts are not just passive artwork and data, but may potentially also include scripts that can have unintended or malicious consequences. We need to improve the balance of accessing third-party content that allows creators to share and have users to get this content easily with enough speed bumps and checks that everyone knows what risks are involved. Now, my suggestion in the short term, and I don't think they're going to do it, is shutting down the KDE store, doing a sweep of everything that is currently available, and I know that is going to take a very long time, but going through all of it and making sure that it's not doing anything obviously dangerous. Obviously, doing a full check on everything is going to take a really long time, but at least a surface level look. Longer term, we need to progress on two avenues. We need to make sure we separate the safe content, where it's just metadata and content, from the unsafe content with scriptable content. Then we can look at providing curation and auditing as part of the store process in combination with slowly improving sandbox support. Also in the long run, I think they should look into building static analyzers that look for obviously dangerous patterns, like using RMRF with a variable, and that variable hasn't actually been checked. Obviously, this is going to be complex, and maybe human moderation is easier, but at least think about the idea. Pretty much all of this stuff also got posted over on the KDE Twitter. Now, there is one part of their response on here that I will take slight issue with. That is the final response. Nevertheless, this will take time and resources. We recommend all users to be careful when installing and running software not provided directly by KDE or your distros. When something's coming from the official KDE add-on store, it's a reasonable assumption to make, like it's a reasonable assumption in the snap case with Canonical, that this is something coming directly from the project. This is something coming directly from KDE. And yes, it is by a third-party developer, but if it is on the store, it's a reasonable assumption to make that this is in some way tested or endorsed by the KDE project. Now, for the record, that doesn't mean the user is right, but it is a reasonable assumption to make. Now, assuming this actually gets dealt with, and this doesn't become another canonical situation where five years from now, we are talking about the exact same thing, this was a good response. So it's a matter of waiting and seeing what they actually do. But in the end, this is just another reason for me to keep running Breeze Dark and be happy about it. So let me know. Were you aware of the way that global themes actually worked? Are you the kind of person who likes to install a ton of different themes, a ton of different widgets, a ton of different scripts, and maybe you're going to reconsider just randomly installing things. Let me know down below. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribe, Silly Bear Paint, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and... Oh no, your home directory. Teehee, I deleted it.